Hey guys, this is Shelby with Rogers Public Library. So this week for Full Steam Ahead, I wanted to talk to you guys about um, something called simple machines and what they have to do um, with levers and with something called mechanical advantage. You know, before we can talk about simple machines and mechanical advantage, we have to take a step back and we have to talk about forces and work. So forces, um, we can think of these as interactions or as pushes or pulls, right? So in order to move an object, you have to exert an energy on it, right, to make it move, right? Forces are things that make things move, but just because there are forces doesn't mean things are moving, right? Um, so think about gravity, right? So last week we talked about gravity and how you can think of it as like a force, right? And if you have something up in the air um, and it falls, gravity is acting on it, but gravity is still acting on it when it's sitting on the table, right? That's because the forces are balance, right? There's one force pushing it down and there's another force called the normal force that's pushing it up and that causes it to stay still. Now, so that's what force is. And work is when work, when forces cause movement, right? So you can think of work as being force over a distance or if you want to talk about math, you can say that force is or work is force times distance, right? Um, and that's where the idea of mechanical advantage comes in. Um, because mechanical advantage happens, it, it makes work easier without reducing the amount of work done. Um, and the way that we get mechanical advantage is through things called simple machines. And there's actually six, but we're just going to be talking about one that, this week. And it's the lever, right? And we can think of simple machines in the context of, laws, of the law of the lever. So, Right now, so this is made out of Duplo blocks. Um, there's these guys with slots in them, and then I have like a piece throwing through, and it rotates. Right. So it's a relatively simple setup, although it took a lot of Lego pieces to make it. Now, so you'll notice that while it's like this, it's balanced, right? There's equal forces on either sides of this point that it's pivoting on. Um, so the point that it pivots on, that's called the fulcrum, and then we can think of this actual cross-section as being a beam, or, um, you know, it, it's more of what we think of as a lever, but the whole assembly is called a lever, right? So, um, let's see, so if we put a block over here, we'll see, now the forces aren't balanced anymore. There's more force on this side, so it sinks to the bottom. And we can put this piece over here, and once again, they get balanced. Okay, so we know that these pieces, ooh, okay, we know that these two pieces weigh the same, right? They're the same exact pieces. But what if I put this piece right here? Well, it's not going down, right? It's, this side is heavier, or there's more force on this side than there is on this side. And if I put the piece this way, now this side is heavier. Um, now we know that these two pieces are the same, right? Exactly identical. Um, so what's happening is that this is balanced because there's the same amount of force on either side. Um, but, and the same, the distance is the same. So there's the same amount of work being done. Um, but when we put the blocks on here, we're not talking about just forces and weight, we're also talking about work. And so what's happening is that when you put things further away from the pivot point, um, they act, there's an increase of work being done, right? Um, because it's being done over a longer distance. So you can say, oh, there's this distance is four and this piece weighs two. You can say that's the work is eight, right? That's just an example it doesn't actually um those aren't those numbers don't actually mean anything but this over here it's five away or six away we can think of it that way but it's the same force so because the distance the force is acting over is longer there's a greater amount of work being done so um we have an imbalance and we have one side sinking down versus the other side um and so you know, this is something that we can demonstrate with a um, with Legos, but also has important real life applications, right? So if we can 
increase distance in order to, if we have a very long stick, we can use it to lift up objects that we wouldn't be able to lift up just by ourselves with our hands, right? Um, because it takes a certain amount of energy to lift it up this way, but it takes a lot less energy if we use a, a lever and tilt it up like that, right? Um, and here, this is an example of a le lever that we use to make work easier. So there's the fulcrum, that's this rivet right here. Um, and there's actually two levers, right? Um, each of these is a lever, each of these is a lever. And when we squeeze down, we're multiplying the force so that we can punch little holes in things. Um, much better than we would if we were just trying to use our hands to punch holes in things. Um, another real life application of a lever is called a trebuchet. Um, now a trebuchet is just a specific kind of catapult. Um, so this is also made out of Legos, and I'm going to take the rubber bands off. It's just a lever that swings along it, and then there's a lot of Legos because when I was making it, um, I was having trouble with the catapult just falling apart. So I ended up adding a lot of extra pieces that are there, there for stability. And now, if this was... Um, in the Middle Ages, they used trebuchets to like throw rocks and stuff at people over really long distances, um, kind of like we do with cannons and stuff like that nowadays. Um, and if it, this was a big trebuchet, like you would use, uh, like knights and stuff would use, it would have something called a counterweight, right? Um, so you can think of the counterweight kind of in this context, right? So let's say that you had a piece on the end and then you added a bunch of pieces kind of closer to the middle. Um, so what's happening in this case is you, you have a very light object and then you have a really heavy object acting over a shorter distance. Um, and so this is kind of the opposite of what we talked about before. We said you wanted to move the, you wanted to do work over a longer distance so you would have to do less less of it right um, and get mechanical advantage um, but a trebuchet works on a little different principle and that is when you do the work over a very short distance um you're increasing the speed right so think about it this way when the whole lever moves this point and this point or this point and this point move um at the same rate Right, so when I tilt it up, these points are still relative to each other. But over the course of time that they move, this one moves a lot further than this piece does. So it goes from all the way down here to all the way up here. So that's about the length of my hand. But this piece, it goes from down here-ish to up here-ish, right? So about three fingers. Right, and because it's moving over a longer distance, it's moving a longer distance over a shorter period of time, it's going faster. And when things go faster, they have um, greater force, right? And that's some, that's on, I think, the second law of motion. It's force is mass times acceleration. So if you accelerate a tiny little piece of this, like, uh, like this rubber eraser, really fast, or if you had a big trebuchet and you were accelerating a rock really fast, it would have more force. Um, and that's how levers are used in a trebuchet, right? So we don't have a counterweight because there's not really room for it. It's so small, but we're using rubber bands instead. Um, and because of that, we can do, we can launch this pretty far. Let's see. Got it so much further. I'm going to tighten up the rubber bands a little bit and then because there's more tension yeah we got it to launch way over there i think it traveled about five or six feet all in all um so yeah this is you know um theoretically you could do the same thing with one of these but you need a bigger rubber band or something like that um so that was our, our demonstration you know we talked about how there's a relationship between the force being done and the distance that it's being done over um, and that is really important when you start talking about other um, simple machines that are more complicated or at least not so straightforward and easy to demonstrate as levers are. Um,
Now, and because um, we're talking about machines and things that move, I thought that a really cool craft to do would be to make um, kind of like kinetic art or moving sculptures. And so I have two different ones that I made right here. Um, you're gonna need a grown-ups help with both of these. Um, uh, each of these involve the use of a hot glue gun, right? So that's that's something you'll want a, a grown-up to help you with, definitely. Um, in this one, I also used a power drill. I don't recommend that you do that, right? Um, it's a bad idea to mess with power tools. Um, but what you can do instead is you can use a lever just like this to um, punch a hole in a popsicle stick. I did this earlier. You gotta squeeze pretty hard. Um, but you can punch a hole in a popsicle stick just like that. I really did do this earlier. Okay, theoretically you can punch a hole in a popsicle stick with a hole punch. Um, but I'm having a little difficulty right now. So, um, but you can do that to make one of these guys, which is just a bunch of popsicle sticks, or you can think of it as uh, beams pivoting uh, along a fulcrum um, on a little skewer, and they're separated by beads. And since they're separated by beads, they all can spin individually, and it looks pretty cool. At least I think so. This one's a little bit, um, well, it's easy to make, but it's a little bit more complicated what it's supposed to be. So I poked holes in cardboard, and, and then I got some random screws that I had at my house, and I hot glued them into the cardboard. Then I stretched a piece of yarn across it, or twine, and I hot glued these to it. Um, and so it's actually a model of a wave, right? We talked about this when we um, did the sand figures, the lizardude curves, um, and it kind of shows you how waves propagate through time. And waves aren't made out of levers, but the popsicle sticks are kind of acting as levers in this specific wave that we have right here. Um, but those are some craft ideas. Um, there's of course other things that you can do in terms of sculptures. Something else you might consider doing, um, although I wouldn't advise it, is you can use a catapult to fling crowns or something and um, try to do art that way, right? That's a little bit more advanced and that's and then you need to talk over with your parents first before you just decide to do on your own. Um, but that's all I have for you guys this week. Um, I hope you have fun and I'll see you next time.